What is going on my friends? This is Dustin with Electrician U and today we are going to talk about Transformers. So why do we even use Transformers? What are they? Well, Transformers really are, are useful for a number of reasons, but the most common usage is that you need to take a high voltage and change it into a lower voltage. Um, this can be for a specific piece of equipment. So say you have a building that's 480 volts, the whole service, everything in the building has 277 lighting and 480 you know, appliances, but you have something that is a 208 rated motor or a piece of equipment that shows up and you're like, shit, we just paid $100,000 for this piece of equipment uh, and it doesn't match the voltage. Well, ahead of time, somebody's going to know that and have been like, all right, we'll just take this transformer, we'll transform the voltage, we'll get this uh, voltage at whatever this equipment is rated at. So you just drop a transformer in place and you say, okay, well, I'm going to take that 480, I'm going to change it into 208 through this device and feed this thing 208. That's essentially why they're used most of the time. It can be inverse. I mean, you could take a whole building that's 208 and uh, you have no need for anything 480, but then you get this big ass piece of equipment that's rated to run 480. Well, the only way to do that, I mean, you don't have 480 run to your building. So you just take one of those uh, 208 panels, come off of a breaker, you feed this transformer in 208 and you can get 480 out of it. Um, what you're doing when you're changing the voltage, you're also changing the amperage. So uh, if you look at Ohm's law, volts times amps equals watts, well that means to get watts or to get VA, you can change the relationship between the V and the A. So if you raise your voltage, you're going to lower your amperage to get the same number on the other side of that equation. Or inversely, you can lower your voltage, raise your amperage to get that same number. So a transformer is kind of a constant power uh, device or a constant wattage device, not really wattage. You can get a whole different video about why transformers are rated in VA instead of watts. It's kind of the same thing, but really not. But anyways, it, the whole idea is that you can get a constant amount of power through this device by feeding a different voltage through and getting a different voltage out. Because when you do that, each one of those circuits is gonna draw a different amount of current based off of the resistance or the reactance of the windings inside of there. So a transformer typically, if we say like a 480 volt delta to a uh, 240 volt delta transformer, on one side, you're gonna have a whole crap load of windings, and that's your 480 volt primary side. And then on your secondary side, you're gonna have a lot less windings. You're gonna have thicker wire because what's happening is you're feeding a high voltage at a low current through the primary, but since the wattage has to stay the same on the secondary side, automatically what happens, you have less uh, uh, windings around the coil and you have thicker wire. So you're gonna end up having a different resistance or reactance because of that, which is going to produce a different voltage at a different amperage and it's gonna be inverse. So if we have a, a transformer that's got a two to one turns ratio, it means that on the primary side, we've got twice as many turns as we do on the secondary side. That means if we feed any voltage in, we're gonna get half the voltage out just because of the number of turns. So what that also means, since this thing keeps the wattage the same, that means that automatically it's going to figure out the current that can run through it and it's gonna change. So if we're feeding a 480 volt circuit into the primary that draws 100 amps, well, 400, uh, 480 times 100 equals 48,000 VA. So we're feeding that much power into this thing. Well, coming out of it, because we have less turns around the coil, we're gonna get out 240 volts, but in doing so, we're gonna raise the amperage of that circuit but it's still the same 48,000 watts or 48,000 VA through the device. So what that means is that we have 480 coming in, 240 coming out, 100 amps coming in, 200 amps going out. 480 volts times 100 amps equals 48,000. 240 times 200 amps equals 48,000. So these devices are always just trying to balance and keep the same amount of power. 
but it's really just based off of uh, how many windings, how many times they've wound the primary versus the secondary inside of this thing. Transformers are also really helpful in isolating the primary side from the secondary side. So if you have some sort of fault or something happened on the primary side, it doesn't jump across to the secondary side because they're, they're completely isolated. You have a one winding and another winding that don't touch. A good example of this would be an isolation transformer where we have the same voltage in and out. So we feed 120 volts in, we get 120 volts out. So if the 120 volt primary is really dirty power, you have 120 volt secondary, which is really clean power and you kind of have a fresh start really because you're isolating the two circuits. The typical dry type transformers that you're going to see out on a job site are going to be a delta primary and a Y secondary. So you have delta in and uh, primary and you have secondary out uh, that's Y configuration. There may be times where you have something that is a listed uh, backfeed transformer. Uh, a backfeed transformer you can actually flip those and you can feed Y in and get delta out. Um, but and I'm not going to go into all of the different types. There's zigzag transformers and there's delta delta and there's y delta, delta y, y y. Um, there's a lot of different kinds of transformers that I can make several more videos about. But just know that there is different wiring configurations that they wire the coils in one side than they do on the second side. And it allows for some unique things to happen in doing that. All right, so without going too crazy into depth, I just wanted to illustrate a little bit what the difference between delta and Y is. So say we've got this transformer out there, right? And we keep saying that we've got delta primary and that we've got Y secondary. Really what that means is incoming, we've got delta, outgoing, we've got uh, Y. So what delta and Y means is that <clears throat> There's three coils inside of a transformer. So say we've got uh, coil one, we've got coil two, we've got coil three. This is our secondary. So we'll just write secondary. That means that these coils together are wired a specific way so that they get a certain amount of voltage out of them, so that they have a certain relationship and that we can provide a neutral uh, when we get power out of it to our load. So if you look, this coil would be representative of this one. X2's coil would be representative of that one. X3 would be this one. So this is our low voltage output. This is our Y. So what they do is first obvious thing is every single one of the coils is tapped together, right? Like at one end of every coil, they're all combined. So what we could do is just take like this one, this one, and this one. Boom. So that is our XO. That is this point, the center point where all three coils come together. Well, then each one of them has uh, another end of the coil that's not hooked up to anything. Well, that's what we actually hook up our uh, three phase load to inside of a panel. So, um, you know, we have conductors that go out from this thing and hook into a panel into a breaker somewhere. And that's the secondary side. And that's how you're getting a neutral is you're just taking the center point, just like they do out in the streets. You know, we got the transformers that are up on the pole. The point where all three of them come together is where we uh, put our grounded conductor and actually ground that part of the transformer. So now let's talk about the primary side of this same exact device. So transformers on the inside, they actually have one coil on the inside and another coil that goes around them on the outside. So the primary is always the one on the outside. The primary is gonna have twice as many windings as the secondary will. And the primary is gonna be a smaller wire than the secondary because when you're stepping down your voltage, you're gonna be increasing your amperage coming out. So uh, the delta is wired a little bit different. So you still have three points, one, two, three, but instead of taking all of the coils and putting them together in the center, they're taking each coil and going end to end with them. Um, and then we just tap off of each one of these points. All right, so we've got H1 to H2. Well, this is our H1, and we have to connect that to H2. And then we take H2 and go to H3, 
H2 to H3, and then from H3 we go back to H1. So it's kind of getting sloppy, sorry. But at each one of these points then, we have a jumper that comes out. And these are the terminals that you would put your high voltage on. So these would be your, your in, 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 and these would be out, out, out. Um, probably should have just represented them like I drew them right. Uh, we've got X1, X2, X3, uh, and we've got XO up there. We've got H1, H2, and H3. So that's how they're wound. Really, they're, they're wound twice as much on the primary, half as much on the secondary. That's how you would get, you know, if it is the turn, a two to one turns ratio. Sometimes transformers have like four to one turns ratios or whatever. Um, a lot, of, there's so many different kinds of transformers that have so many different reasons to them. Um, but that's just to show you, it's the same coil of wire. You know, there's one on the inside and one on the outside. They put them inside of, of each other. But depending on how you wire them, if you wire three ends together or if you wire them end to end in series, you're gonna get a different uh, amount of voltage, different ratio of amperage. Um, there's a whole, a whole other video I can do on that. Like what's the difference uh, output on a delta versus output on a Y? Why you would have 240 volts coming out versus 208 coming out, but I'll get into that later. I just wanted to show you guys kind of the relationship to the windings and, and how all of that works inside. Now let's open up the guts of a transformer and see what it looks like. There's a couple of things to take note of inside of a transformer. Now this is a really old transformer. You've got all your taps here. Um, you can tell on a transformer that the Y secondary is this point. Usually the actual strap that everything hooks up to is thicker than all of the rest of the taps are but also you've got these bands that all three come off to the same point. And the only place on a transformer where that's gonna be the case is at the neutral. Um, so that's something just to kind of take note of. Another thing is notice that you've got these thin conductors and you've got these thick conductors. There's another one, thin, thick, uh, thin, thick, and then all the neutrals are thick. Everything that's on the secondary side, since the secondary is the low voltage in our case, is going to need to be thicker because the secondary is less voltage but more amperage so that thicker conductor can handle more amperage the thin conductor is on the primary side so usually when a coil is wrapped the high voltage primary is going to be a thin conductor so you can tell that this is like number 10 you know thhn without any uh, uh, insulation on it whereas the inside is your secondary and that is that really really thick conductor so you can tell what your secondary versus your primary is just um, you know if none of these are labeled like in this transformer not a single one of these is labeled so it's like well shit how do I know where my primary wires go where do I, how do I know where my secondary go you could sit and tone all of that out or you could just look and be like okay well this is a tiny little wire that uh, that goes to this coil so I know that this is a primary this is thick so that's going to be a secondary that's a primary that's a secondary that's a primary and that's a secondary the order the phasing you know from a phase b phase c phase none of that really matters essentially as long as you are in the same coil for everything so you know if you have an a phase primary this is going to be your a phase secondary because they both go down into the same place now another thing to look at these are the taps for the transformer. So you notice every one of these is tapped on the left side, second post down. Same thing here and same thing here. So each one of these represents a different, uh, a different post or a different voltage if you have to make minor adjustments. So if you need 208, but you're getting like 273 or something like that, you can actually move these around. This is changing the primary uh, windings. So instead of you um, being all the way at the, the highest potential, you can lower it slightly and you can tell each of these, uh, these bands, there's like individual bands, it's all one solid conductor. But what they did is they, they wrapped that conductor all the way around this coil and at a certain point they twisted out 
a little bit and then they just kept going and then they twist it out a little bit twist it out a little bit and they kept doing that so wherever you tap this it's going to change the difference of potential just slightly so it's going to bring it from a higher to a lower potential and that's how you can make uh, small little adjustments in your voltage when you have uh, a higher or lower secondary voltage coming out. Now another thing to take note of is the neutral. So a lot of people say that you derive a neutral uh, when you're talking about a delta to y uh, transformer. So you're bringing delta in, you're getting y out. Well, this is the common point or the center point for that y configuration. So you see this uh, conductor is going down, it's wrapping the inside of that coil and it's coming back out to this common point. Same thing with the next winding. You've got a phase conductor that you hook up here, goes down, wraps around that coil, and it comes back to the same exact point. Same thing for the third one. So all three of your uh, secondary windings are coming back to a common point, and that is where we get our neutral from. That's where we hook up neutral right here that goes out to our load. And then you'll notice that there is a bonding jumper that goes all the way down to ground. So in this transformer, it's really, really important in all transformers to bond. This is called your XO terminal. This is where your neutral and your ground need to be bonded together. So you bond XO, that's all your neutrals. You're gonna hook your load neutral to it. You're gonna make sure that you run a bonding jumper all the way down to the can itself, you know, the metal of this enclosure. And then any other grounds that come in or out of the transformer also have to bond to that. Plus, if you have building steel that you're trying to bond to, you're gonna have a jumper that goes out and then goes up somewhere to building steel. And you might even have a ground rod that's coming out. Uh, same thing, that ground rod is gonna come. So all of those things, all those grounds, equipment grounds, um, grounding electrodes, building steel and neutral, all of them need to be bonded together um, in the same exact place at the center point of that secondary. And that is always on the XO terminal. Most of the transformers that you're gonna come across, newer ones at least, are gonna say like um, H1, H2, H3, X1, X2, X3, and XO. They're gonna label what each thing is. But it's just kind of cool that I have this one that is really, really old and shows how all of it's wound. Now let's talk a little bit about sizing transformers. So there's a pretty easy calculation that we need to go by uh, to size one of them. It's for single phase at least, it's just voltage times amperage equals your VA. Um, that's what the transformer is gonna be rated in. That's the power rating. For three phase, it's the same thing. I just wrote these threes so that you knew we were talking about three phase. It has nothing to do with the calculation. Um, but you're gonna take your voltage times your amperage times the square root of three, which is 1.732. Just a good number to memorize. Anytime you're dealing with three phase loads, you need to use this. If you're talking efficiency, horsepower, anything like that. You always need to use a square root of three uh, or 1.732. That'll give you your three phase VA for the transformer. So let's start out with single phase. Uh, we're gonna use the secondary. So uh, reason I use the secondary is the load that you're trying to feed is coming out of the secondary side of that transformer. So you need to know what the, the voltage of that equipment is and what the amperage is, and then you can figure out uh, what the primary side is based off of that. So we've got voltage and amperage of our load. Let's say that we have a 208 volt uh, single phase load that is a 200 amp piece of equipment. So we know we have 208 for our voltage. We've got 200 amps. So what is the VA? So we've got 208 times 200, which is gonna equal 41,600 VA. So transformers are always rated in KVA, which just means thousandths of VA. So it's really uh, gonna be a 41.6 KVA transformer. Now you're gonna always upsize, like they don't make just a 41.6 uh, VA tra or KVA transformer. So they do make a 45 though. So you can round up to 45 KVA and have that be your, uh, the size of your transformer. That's pretty easy, right? So you know 45 uh, KVA is gonna handle the load coming out of the secondary and then coming out of the primary, you would just make, have to make sure that you're running 40, or, uh, 
uh, 480 to it, and then your breaker size, conductor size, and everything's going to be based off of whatever that's going to draw. So that's pretty easy to figure that out as well. Uh, now let's do three phase. So three phase is the same deal. Uh, say that we've got 208 three phase instead of 208 single phase like we had in this one. Um, 208, we'll say that we still have a 200 amp load um, times 1.732, which is the square root of three, and that's gonna give us our VA. And the total is 72,051, which would be our VA. Um, so then our KVA would be 72 KVA. Again, you're gonna to wanna to round up so there's a 75 kVA transformer, then that's the one that you're gonna to wanna to use. So pretty easy, right? Like it's not that difficult to figure out what the transformer size should be, what the load is. Um, you, you just need to know it's Ohm's law. It's, you know, your, uh, your E times I equals P. It's your power. Same thing over here. E times I times square root of three equals power. Now, when I said that a 45 kVA would be the next size up for a single phase transformer, that's technically not correct. So um, the 45 kVA is a three phase transformer size. So within single phase, usually you're gonna be working with like 15 kVA, 25 kVA, 37 and a half, uh, 50, 75, and 100. Um, those are the typical sizes. They go above that. Three phase, you're usually working with like 15, 25, uh, 45, 75, 112.5. But those are the typical sizes within three phase. So just understand when you're sizing a transformer and you get your calculation to go look up single transformer sizes or three phase transformer sizes or print a damn chart to remind you what all of them are. Um, but if you order a 45 kVA single phase transformer, it's gonna show up three phase. Um, so understand what you're getting into before you order one. Some really important things to consider when working with transformers is make sure that you look in the transformer to see if it comes with lugs or not. A lot of transformers out there don't come with lugs. They just come with holes that you can bolt your own lugs on. Some of them do come with lugs. Um, another thing to pay attention to is the actual positioning of the lugs so that way you're not uh, screwing yourself and then out in the field you don't have enough wire because you didn't plan for how those conductors were gonna come in. Another important thing to do because this is a vibrating piece of equipment is to make sure that you, you tighten everything to the torque specs of the equipment. This is something important to do on all big equipment, on all lugs at services. Um, it's, it's something that I do all the time because our code here, we actually have to mark our torque settings so an inspector can look at them. But with especially with vibrating equipment, it's really important to torque all of your lugs down, get a torque wrench out, look at what the specs of the equipment call out for, um, and, and torque everything to spec. Another important thing to think about is once you've hooked up a transformer and you've turned everything on, check your voltage and make sure that you have the right voltage for the piece of equipment that you're gonna be uh, running out to. If it calls for 208 and you have like 222 for your voltage, but it's still connected in Y configuration, you can go into the primary taps where it'll say like 500 volts, 460 volts, you know, like. 340 volts, you can actually change the taps on the primary to get a different voltage out. If you need to kind of bump your voltage up a little bit or bump your voltage down a little bit, there's a lot of equipment out there that cannot be hooked up. You know, there's certain tolerances of voltages. So if the voltage you're getting is plus or minus 5% or plus or minus 10%, you may ruin that piece of equipment or all of the equipment down the line that you're feeding. So make sure that you check your voltage check the equipment, see if you're within your values. And if there's any question about it, you can always call the manufacturer of the equipment and make sure and say, this is the voltage I'm getting out. Do, you, do I need to change these taps or am I good within the warranty? Um, they'll be able to tell you that. But just know that you can change the taps on these transformers on the primary side. Another thing to pay attention to is vibration. So 
taking pads and putting them underneath the transformer when a metal transformer is sitting on concrete, it's gonna vibrate, it's gonna be loud. So putting transformer pads underneath your transformers, even if it's something that you're hanging from a ceiling on a strut rack, put transformer or put a put rubber pads underneath the transformer. That way it's not vibrating metal on metal. It'll just make it a little bit quieter. The last thing to note when ordering a transformer is pay attention to the actual physical size of the transformer. Um, not every 75 kVA transformer is going to be the exact same size. Some of them are taller, some of them are wider, you know. Um, make sure that you pay attention to the size. Measure If you're trying to replace a transformer especially, measure the dimensions of everything. Take a picture of the nameplate of that transformer. Get as much information as you can so that you can match it exactly for what was there. All right, so that's pretty much it. Um, I could have done like 13 videos in 20 different directions, um, covering a lot of this stuff way more in depth. There's so much to know with transformers. Um, but I just wanted to get like give you guys kind of a basic flow, understanding how to size them, how to change them out, things to think about, how to know what is on the name plates, and how to just understand all of it. So uh, let me know if you guys have any other questions. Appreciate your attention. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next one.